Hello and welcome to Infinity. It's been said that in the universe there are just four things, which is space, time, energy and matter, and everything else is a combination of these. And in images, there are three things, which are red, green and blue, and everything else is a combination of those, in particular colours. So this is kind of a different thing in that it's not really looking at images and techniques, but kind of a walk through colours and thinking always in terms of what the red, green and blue are doing. And if you can sort of really get your head into these, then you can look at an image and see, look in one part and going, ah, oh, I can see that, you know, that they, all the colours are higher here. One colour is dominant and this, the others are this way. And if I change this one colour by this one way, maybe using a channel mixer or something, then I will, I will affect it in a certain way. So, Let's start off then with the basic red, green and blue primary colours. We mix these, we get the magenta, yellow and cyan. So red is 100% red, 0% blue, 0% green. Yellow is 100% red, 100% green and 0% blue. And we can go to the tertiary colours. Now we've got the other colours in between and for example orange is 100% red, 50% green and 0% blue. And to explain that the colours here, all of them, are made up of some combination of either 100%, 50% and 0%. So red, green and blue can only have one of these. This is not red then green then blue, it's any any of these, but they can only pick from one of them. So, let's go through a whole bunch of colours based on brightness. So, and we'll start off, we'll go through, based on what's the maximum value in any one of these. So, when, we'll start off with 100% of any one colour, but the other two colours, the blue, you know, the red, green and blue, the other two colours can only go down a little bit. So I think it would either be 94 or 88%. And what you get is because all the colours are high, there's a lot of brightness in there, then the combination colour is quite faded, if you like, or very light. It's a tint. If we go down, step down a bit now, so you've got the 188, 75, then you're getting more of a kind of pastel -y colour. And when we get 50% down to 50, stretching down there, you're getting more, more the recognisable colour, but there's still a fair amount of effectively grey in it. Then 25 at the bottom and zero back to the originals. What about starting with a maximum of 75%? Now, now look at this. Just by coming down to that, it's a narrow range again, but now you're getting it like it's, it's a tinted grey, which, and, and these form a palette of themselves. You could, if you had a lot of this in an image, you would have an, a quite striking effect. And then stretching down to 50, you can see as we step down and down, it, it becomes more and more, the colour becomes stronger as the range gets bigger. What about a maximum of 50? So now again, you're starting here, narrow range, that kind of greyish effect, which is can be quite attractive. Then down to 25 down to zero, maximum 25. Notice immediately here, this again is really dark, isn't it? Even with the maximum of 25%, everything goes dark. And this is because right at the, you know, the bottom quarter, if you like, is getting right into shades and shadows. And if you get to a maximum of 12, you know, around that 10-12%, it looks black. 
you know, you saw in these colours, you'd think this is black. You only see colour in it in contrast with other colours of black. So let's have a look at the same colours, but in a different way. And almost it could be seen as being kind of a better way to look at it. I prefer it this way anyway. So we're looking now, instead of saying what's the maximum colour, we're saying what's the gap between the maximum and the minimum. So at 100%, that's all you get. You've got the basic colours full on. But when you get down then to a gap of 75, it's starting to go off there. It's not the originals, but it's kind of getting there. And it's sort of getting a little bit, bit darker. We've got more options when we get down to a gap of 50. Now we're getting a little bit more muted. But again, each of these in itself is sort of related to the other one. We're getting a lot more when we get to the gap of 25, because you've got 25%. There's a lot you can get in there, so you're getting yeah down to these pastels. But also related are the other ones when you're just sliding down. So these form a, a like drilling through them, you get a family as well down to the darks. And then a gap of 12% between the maximum and the minimum of red, green and blue, you're getting these very subtle sort of greyish colours, which themselves are kind of nice. And so overall then, you get a picture like this, where up, up and down here we've got the brightness from dark up to light, and across we got the range between the maximum and the minimum, between the maximum of red, green and blue, and the minimum of red, green and blue. And that gap, which is a measure of, say, of saturation, is quite significant and always worth keeping in mind, because you can see the different things, the different effects on colour that it has. OK, that's about it for now. Thank you very much for watching.